Welcome back to DHN. Let's talk crypto. In order for us to get the best understanding of what the reserve token is, we must first establish a fundamental understanding of inflation. I know, but it is not just a current political talking point. It is something that has affected every nation on every continent since the formation of modern society. Simply, as nations rise to power and influence, the value of their currency also increases. The same can be said once that nation falls. Low levels of power and influence are typically followed by mistrust in the current currency, making the way for a new one. That's a broad view of the process. On a societal level, what you'll see is the increase of prices to correlate with the excess amount of currency in circulation. Nations often print more money when the value is threatened, which only pushes the value down more. Because more people have money, they are buying more things, suppliers can't keep up with the new demand, so prices often tick up to slow the rate of buying. The effect of this can be seen by comparing the price of an item over the course of two to three years. If there is a consistent increase in price, this is surely a sign of an inflationary economy. This is where the reserve comes into play. Hi, I'm Nevin, one of the co-founders of Reserve. This video introduces Reserve overall. We're going to tell you about the main problems with money that we're trying to solve, how we're trying to solve them, the progress we've made so far, and how you can use what we've already built and help us build what's next. Reserve is basically a new approach to currency. If it were to fully succeed, it would be used by the majority of people in the world. Like every person, business, bank, and government would be able to make every payment, fill every savings account, and make every loan using this new approach to money. What Reserve is looking to do is create a currency that will not inflate. They do this by using a three token system. RSV, Reserve Token Stablecoin, that can be used just like a digital dollar. RSR, which is the one you're probably the most familiar with, is the utility coin that keeps the RSV stablecoin stable. And lastly, we have collateral tokens. These are the assets that are held in smart contracts, which back the RSV tokens. Now, RSR has two jobs. First would be governance, giving holders the ability to propose changes to the network. Second, ensuring the RSV stablecoin through a staking process. When you stake RSR, you will receive rewards because your stake actually goes towards the insurance of the RSV. Your share is now in the form of R tokens or liquidity pools. You receive rewards from the revenue generated by these R tokens. If the R token you are insuring has a pretty high market cap, you can also expect higher returns. The best part of it is anyone can mint an R token. Think of these as native assets within the reserve network. So if a company comes to reserve and they wish to issue a token, they would first have to provide the collateral in RSR. That amount would then be converted into the RSV stablecoin from which R tokens can be minted. The buying of these RSR tokens for that purpose would remove them from the market. Now, here's where things get a bit more interesting. As of now, the RSV is pegged to the US dollar with reserve baskets in USDC and BUSD. But Reserve has plans to depeg from the dollar in exchange for currencies that are backed by physical assets, be it stable coins or other tokenized forms of collateral. That is the most important piece to me because so many nations around the world are looking into ways to back their currencies. For example, Russia is looking to issue gold backed stable coins that will be interoperable with their developing payment system. According to a report from the IMF published in 2021, U.S. dollar share of global foreign exchange reserves dropped to a 25 year low at the end of 2020. Even though the value of the dollar has pretty much stayed the same over the last two decades, the decline of USD reserves by central banks shows a gradual shift away from the U.S. dollar. Another IMF report published just a few days ago talks about how nations around the world have been loading up on gold with a specific concentration coming from smaller countries where inflation is the worst. I do not think it's a coincidence that those are the same countries leading the adoption of blockchain technology. So with the nations of the world shifting to not only asset backed currencies, but stable coins as well, an asset that can create both on a massive scale, I think is going to do quite well over the next few years. 
Reserve also has the Reserve app, which is a cash app like service that allows people in underbanked areas to transact with digital dollars. It is currently up and running in Venezuela, Argentina, Peru, Colombia, and Panama. Mexico is on their roadmap as the next place they want to branch into. The RSV token is accepted at over 1500 locations all throughout Latin America. The overall goal of the reserve is to create an ecosystem of asset-backed stablecoins driven strictly by community involvement. Which may sound like a massive security issue on the surface, but let's take a look at the company that Reserve keeps. For starters, you have Coinbase, which holds RSR in custody, but has not listed it on the public platform yet. The Digital Currency Group, one of the largest crypto investors in the space, I know they're in a bit of hot water now, but when the majority of your stake is in a nascent asset class, there's bound to be a bit of turbulence. And then we have GSR, a liquidity provider and one of the first market makers on Ripple's consensus ledger. Distributed Global is listed as the first investor of RSR. I couldn't find out that much on the company, but then again, it is private. Next is Arrington XRP, who is run by the founder of TechCrunch. You may also have heard that Peter Thiel is one of the lead investors behind RSR, but he is not alone at all. He also brought Jack Selby from PayPal and their VP of marketing. Then we have the founder of Morgan Stanley's technology fund, Chris Blair, Jeff Morris, who heads product and revenue for Tinder. But the biggest name on this investor roster, in my opinion, would have to be Sam Altman, the co-founder of OpenAI, you know, creators of ChatGPT. Now, with that kind of money behind reserve, I am very curious as to what would come from this project. The max supply of RSR is 100 billion, 42% of which is already in circulation. What I also found to be interesting is that there is always consistent volume running through RSR. Out of the top 10 exchanges, you'll often see six to seven figure volumes in 24 hours. Who's moving all that money around? Interesting list of token pairs too. You have the Euro, the Brazilian Real, the Indian Rupee, and even XRP on BitTrue. You'll notice that I waited until the very end to bring up the price of RSR. Well, that was to show you how it works and what it could be used for, which is my main focus with DHA and crypto. At the half a penny price point, with the type of use case it has, all that needs to happen is for one, Coinbase to list them, or a major Latin American bank or retail brand picks them up and adds them to their ecosystem. And with their ties to Ripple, we could even see them used alongside XRP. But that's just speculation though. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. That's all for this one. As always, I'm Wade Teamer. I'll see you in the next one.